All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, trellises. We're building a trellis. We're gonna talk about raised beds um, because I think what's really important here, guys, if you have a garden, you don't always have to have a raised bed. I think it's important uh, depending on what soil temperatures you're after. If you want warmer soil temperatures, it's definitely better to raise things up above grade. If you want cooler soil temperatures, then you don't need a raised bed and actually you may want to go below grade. Um, but this area here, uh, any garden bed, I think, should at least be edged out. Um, at least just lie down some boards or lie down some sort of edging material to create distinct borders between the grass and then the garden. And that's exactly what I've done here is we've actually have a, a raised bed here and I just decided to put some wood around the whole bed to just kind of connect everything. And uh, it looks nice, I think, as well. It looks has a nice little appeal to it visually. And that's just what I, I recommend with you guys. We're gonna actually look at an, another raised bed that I had just built for the raspberries, and we'll talk about why I did that. But again, I think it's really all in the soil temperature here, guys, is that if you want a higher, warmer soil temperature, like, you know, I've got here for my tomatoes, my peppers, my eggplants. It's just so, so important to be growing those particular crops, not only in a warm spot, but somewhere I think where you can raise the, the soil, uh, plant those things above grade. So what we're going to do actually in this section of the, the garden, because this is our summer garden. This is our, warm, our warmer spot in the yard. It's got a southern exposure. It's really uh, the perfect place to be growing things like tomatoes and cucumbers and eggplants and peppers and melons. And what we're going to do along this side of the raised bed, actually, or the, this side of the edge of the, of the garden, is we're going to construct a mini trellis. And um, what we're going to do from the trellis at the top is we're going to hang down string and we're going to string up these individual melon plants that we're going to grow maybe even tomatoes. I'm, I'm undecided exactly what will grow along this trellis. But the whole goal of this, this upcoming year is to continue to grow plants vertically, um, usually as a single stemmed plant. Like you can see here with the tomatoes, they're kind of dying off now. We're very, very close to frost. And this one here, I think, just got hit with some disease. But it does really do a nice job of ripening tomatoes and other crops well into a time when you probably shouldn't have these things uh, because they're so disease free for the most part because you're growing them vertically um, and then also you get a lot more food this way out of a much smaller area so that's what we're going to do along here as i figured instead of using some of these emt poles we just get ourselves a little bit of lumber and we'll just construct something and, and do the strings because i've never done it actually with strings, but a lot of these commercial growers, that's exactly what they do in their greenhouse settings is they will use um, strings that they'll attach at the top of their, their high tunnels. And that's how they'll grow like things like tomatoes and cucumbers. And I'm assuming you could do the same thing with, uh, with melons. I know that you can definitely grow them vertically, but uh, I guess it at least will have to at some point here try it ourselves you know I think the best experience is just doing it yourself right so this board here is going to go right in here I've already marked this out I've measured it out essentially this will be just basically a 10 foot wide trellis with a 10 foot bar at the top this is a uh, what is this a one by one um, one by one post that you could actually just stick this in the ground I guess but we're going to attach it here at the top this is um, wood that is one by I think what is this a one by four and it's eight feet tall and all we're going to do essentially is just drill this in here to the current existing excuse me guys while I do this So as I said, this is going right into the existing raised bed. And actually I'm using the wrong, 
uh, wrong length of screw. <laughs> so we'll get our shorter screws here because this, the raised bed wood is two inches wide. This is one inches wide. So we need something that's two inches long. And uh, what I need to do probably because we have higher winds here is it's not just enough, I think. You know, it's really just not enough to attach this board to this raised bed outside exterior thing. I think what I'm gonna wanna do just in general is we're gonna add some material in here for sure. We're gonna definitely add some mulch and different things over the winter time to kind of encourage some worms and then they'll leave their castings and that will help enrich the soil. But I think the outside edges of this really isn't all that sturdy. I mean, they're basically six foot or eight foot long boards, I think, uh, connected by just a very simple connector. And it's kind of a very flimsy thing in a way. So we're gonna, I guess, have to really beef this up. And I haven't figured out what method exactly I'm gonna use for that. But let's just get that last one in there. And then we're gonna have, I'll just show it to you guys real quick, cause I'm not, I'm not gonna build this with you guys, but this one, I, I marked it out somewhere over here. Here it is. So this one will go about right here. And then this, well, this is not right, cause this is eight feet. So I need, I measured this wrong. So it's good to guys, when you're doing something like this, you definitely wanna eye it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't always want to just rely on your measurements. But at the top here, essentially, we will hang, have this up here. Um, and then from there, we'll have strings that come down. And those strings will act uh, in a way that you can pretty much wrap the strings around the plants. And that will ho hopefully help support these plants. But again, I think I need to beef this up a bit. And maybe it would be probably even better Maybe this should be, now this is the perfect width. So what, I've, what I'm thinking maybe actually is we could put a, another board just like this on the other side. And then in between the two actually goes this, this here. So that would probably make the most sense actually. And that would probably be the most sturdy. So I think, we're, I think that's actually what we're going to do to get ourselves just a really simple, affordable trellis. I think the wood here is like, you know, it's so cheap. It's pressure treated. That's definitely something that you want, you're looking for. Um, and just to take a real close look at some of these raised beds I've created. You know, it's not just for the, the annuals, but I have figs here in these raised beds just to get that warmer soil temperature that we're looking for. It's all really about that warmer temperature. And it's just, these two here are, two of them actually stacked up on top of each other and I just screw them into the other boards. And these don't really, most of them don't have to be the most ridiculously strong structures. You know, you can really do this cheap. I mean, look at this. Look at how long that board is. And I have it just connected by something like this, which is, I believe, zinc plated or galvanized and um, just kind of connecting those two boards together when I probably should have something maybe, you know, in the corner, you can put a one by one in the corner and then screw the, the, um, the boards to the one by one. And in fact, actually, that's what I have over here with this raised bed that I I guess I had originally built this one. You can see that one by one piece right there, which everything is then screwed into that. And that kind of helps just make it a little bit sturdier, especially if these things are longer and contain a lot of soil. And I haven't really had any problems, guys. And I've done, I'm not a builder, you know? I ain't Ross the builder. Some of these things just uh, really don't need a whole lot of wood or a lot of knowledge to do this. Um, and then here we have the raspberries, which 
admittedly, since I have transplanted them, they have not been all that productive. And we actually have, we used to have them, if you guys remember over here, and we used to have them with blackberries and I used to have crazy harvest, just ridiculous amount of growth on those plants. And I would get a pint a day, a pint a day per plant from the raspberries. And it would be just about like this, you know, it would have like six canes from the base. But at this point of the year, it would still be ripening raspberries. It would still be putting out plenty of fruits. I mean, there is very few on here, you know, that I can pick and show you guys. And they're actually really quite good, I imagine. But it's nothing like the production I've seen in the past. And I think the only real big difference that I've been able to tell at this point is the fact that when we transplanted them here this was not a raised bed the soil here isn't all that great either you know a lot of this is peat moss when we had a raised bed originally we used to have a raised bed here and i didn't like how this one did i mean this is going way back now a few years for anyone that's been following along with my channel for that long you know what's going on this used to be a raised bed and then now we transplanted these guys in last year, so it's been taking them a while to really get adjusted. I don't expect them really to take off right away, but I think it's been long enough and I have noticed that the production, the performance just isn't as good. And the raspberry and the blackberry are just plants that really like those warmer temperatures, those warmer soil temperatures. So that's why I'm saying with these raised beds, it's so, so important that if you're gonna be doing something with raised beds, make sure that whatever you're growing once those warmer soil temperatures you know things like broccoli and brassicas and lettuces and things it could be a bad idea for you to be planting those things in your raised bed um, or let's say a fruit tree as an example that uh, a perennial that wakes up quite early like let's say my plums my apricots my apples my pears if you had them in a raised bed uh, they're going to potentially wake up earlier in the season to then really make it much easier to get hit by a late frost. So the raspberry is one of those plants that's really fantastic. Same thing with the blackberry where they may wake up a little bit earlier in the season, but they're only putting out growth. And that growth is usually quite hardy. Um, it's not like they're gonna flower. They're gonna wake up and immediately put out all their flowers. And if you don't protect those flowers, you lose all the fruit. So the raspberry I think is one of them things that's just perfect for this system and I, I honestly think here in this climate the further north you guys go with these things you got to grow them in a raised bed so we're going to level this out I got to get a shovel and and sort of level this thing out I just built this and put it together real quick again really not a whole lot of material or time or if you're just building a box guys and then we're going to fill this in with some soil as I do some bare rooting of the figs the potted figs will fill this in and uh, create ourselves more soil have more moisture better soil more nutrients for these plants and then over time the soil will be warmer and these raspberries will just take off to pretty much what they used to be um, in our old system if you're interested i would highly suggest you check out some of the videos we've done on raspberries and blackberries because we've done so many and those videos really attest to how successful I was with this particular fruit. Let's try some right now. We're four days from frost, potentially frost. And they're still so sweet. They're still so, so good. The SWD hasn't been around these guys because they've been around the figs, but they're wonderful. The maintenance is low. I mean, it's just such an easy thing to grow and it just gives you a ton of food if you do it right. So, all right guys, we'll see you soon, all right? Take care and we'll uh, catch you for the next one. Hit that subscribe button for me.